Yeah, I'm pressing, pressing. I'll keep pressing. Yeah. Lost a lot of friends. Lost a lot of love. Even lost support. Great is a reward for those who are seeking the kingdom. Pressing towards the mark. So you know I'm pressing, 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 pressing. pressing, pressing. See my family, family and my homies Wanna hear him say, say Well done, done, good and faithful servant Come on, yeah. I gotta keep these garments white, yeah. white yeah. Satan flexing, he be trying to steal my crown, I bet I'll make it, I'll make it. if I keep it saying I don't mind Lost a lot of friends, lost a lot of love Even lost support, great is a reward for those who are Seeking the kingdom, pressing towards the mark. So you know I'm pressing, 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 pressing. Yeah, pressing, pressing. Yeah. Every day ain't easy, but I keep on pressing, 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 pressing. My chick, my pressing. Yeah. My I'm just trying to do my best. Seen that logic keep on stressing me. Don't wanna lose my faith, but the devil keep on testing me. Looking for a remedy, can't do this by myself. Got my sword out on my knee, cause I'm gonna need some help. Keep yeah. my head above the water when I'm feeling about to drown. I ain't gonna trip about these bills, I ain't gonna let it take me down. Spin around for some time, keep my faith and play my part. See that calling from my heart, so I'ma press the all the more. Lost a lot of friends, lost a lot of love, even yeah, lost support. Support, yeah. great is a reward for those who are seeking. Again, we're going to get ready to open up. We ask that sisters cover their heads, brothers uncover their heads. Make sure all devices are on vibrate. As we get ready to open up with the Lord's Prayer, Jerusalem is counting in the corner of the house. Take it away, bro. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive, us our debts, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And, our debtors. and lead us not into temptation, and lead us not into temptation but, deliver us from evil. but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, is the kingdom and, the power, and the power and the glory, and the glory forever. forever. Praise, the Lord, Praise the Lord, for he is good, he is good and his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Praise, the Lord God of Israel, Praise the Lord God of Israel, for he is good, he is good and his mercy endures forever. In Jesus, name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray, the Holy One of Israel, the, Holy One of Israel, the King of Kings, King of Kings and, Lord of Lords, and Lord of Lords, the One True God, the one true God and there is, no other. there is no other. Amen. Amen. And the scripture reading will be coming from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 8. And it reads, O oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that thy nations may trouble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things which we look not, thou, look not for, thou camest down. The mountains flowed down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Thou meetest him that, that, that rejoices and worketh righteousness, those that remember thee in the way in thy ways. Behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned in those in continuance, and we shall be saved. But we all are all as unclean thing, and all our righteousness are 
are as filthy rags, and we will do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name that, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou art our potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. I have read for you Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 8. May the Lord bless you the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I have to say that twice, but <laughs> that's just me being silly. But anyhow, it's definitely um, a blessing, you guys, to always be standing before you guys on the Lord's Sabbath day. You know, like I always say, and I'll continue to say, long as I got breath in my lungs, it's always a blessing to be on this side of the green grass. Because you got to realize is that a lot of people, you know, didn't wait to see today. You know, just looking around us and just looking at the pandemic that's going about, you know, like, um, you know, the elder brother Elijah talked how we can actually look at, you know, how when the Lord was sending those plagues during the times of Egypt. But it's kind of like we can look at that now in our time and just seeing thousands fall, you know, on one side of us to the other side. And yet we're still alive to see another day. So. As I always say, man, if your yesterday was your worst day, make your best day a great day in the eyes of God. Because like God said, hey, a living dog is better than a dead lion. So we're going to look at this class today. And as you see on the handout, the title of the class is Obey is Better Than Sacrifice in of Thy Heart. And we're going to look at the class and we're going to touch on, you know, the physical circumcision, what it truly pointed to. We also going to look at how Paul, you know, because in his writings, a lot of people get confused and they get thrown off by the letters of Paul. So we're going to even see inside of his classes that, hey, you know, Paul didn't dismiss being circumcised. Nah, he just went about, he just went about, you know, winning over souls on a crafty level. You know, that's kind of how he did. That's kind of the approach that he took. But we know that inside of the class, we're going to see is that what? Paul was a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee. And the Pharisees was well-versed in the scriptures. Well-versed. So, you know, just for us to go to the New Testament and try to throw away with, you know, a boy on the eighth day being circumcised physically, we can't read that. We can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We truly can't. So we're going to look inside the class. We're going to investigate. Did Paul really, you know, do away with being circumcised on the eighth day? And is that a law that we should be keeping today? You know, so we're going to we're going to dig into the class. And Lord willing, we pray that we get some understanding. But we're going to open this class up. And and I need to get a handout because I got chicken scratch up here. So let me get one of them handouts because, <laughs> man. I get thrown off by looking at my own writing. But anyhow, we're going to open it up in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, because we got to realize that, hey, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God is what's going to allow man to live. And we're talking about spiritually, physically also. But if you just eating the word of God, then, you know, it's going to take you far past living physically. It's going to take you into something spiritual. So we're going to open up in Deuteronomy chapter 8, and this is a disclaimer. You know, you got to understand is that you got to lay down the foundation to the class, and this is one of many pieces of the foundation that we're going to lay down. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. So Deuteronomy chapter 8, and let's build. Verse 1. Go ahead and read, bro. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do. Go ahead. That ye may live and multiply. And go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your father. So all these, you know, that's what it said in the top of verse one, right? It says, all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live. So you got to realize, like, you know, these commandments is what's going to keep you with life. In you. you know, because when you throw away the commandments, what, you throwing your life out 
we're throwing the commandments out. So just understand is that what God is clearly saying is that, hey, all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply. What else it reads, bro? And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. He read it. To humble thee and to prove thee. So God is trying to prove you. On top of that, he's trying to humble you. Because it is a humbling mindset when you come from out of the world and you stop living according to how the world have you living and then you turn to serving God. You know, you have to have a humbling mindset, but also, hey, God is trying to prove you to see if you're going to do what? To know what was in thine heart. Go ahead. Whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And that's the proving ground, brothers and sisters. This is the disclaimer that's on the table looking at, hey. God is trying to prove if you're going to keep his commandments or no. What is it saying in verse 3, though? And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know. Keep going. That he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only. So we understand is that, you know, hey, we need a little bit of physical bread. You know, we need physical food in order to live. You know, we can all understand that. But God said, hey, that's not how you're going to live only, right? What else it reads? But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So this is how you're going to live, brothers and sisters, you know. Hey, you're going to live based upon every word that come out of the mouth of God. Every word, not just a piece or here and there. No, every word. So we look inside the commandments. We see what thou shalt not, thou shalt not, you know and so forth and so forth, God is telling you what you aren't supposed to be doing and what you are supposed to be doing. So guess what that's going to lead you to? That's going to lead you to everlasting life. But it said in the bottom of what? Verse 3, it says what? But by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God, out of the mouth of the Lord, do a man live. Let's keep going. Let's go over to First Samuel. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Verse 4. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, mm -hmm. neither did thy foot swell these 40 years. You see how God took care of the children of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years? Guess what? The raiment, they closed and get old, nor did they feet swell. They're just walking about. Usually, hey, you walk long enough, your feet start to swell up because you've been walking. But what? The children of Israel, none of that occurred with them. Their clothes looked still new, and their feet didn't even swell. During these 40 years in the wilderness. What is it saying in verse 5? Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Keep reading. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. To walk in his ways and to fear him. See, when we read verse 3, just understanding is that, hey, every word that proceed out of the mouth of God is how you live. Yes, every word. But guess what comes with that? Fear. See, if every word comes out of the mouth of God and you don't fear him, then you're not going to eat off of his words. You're not going to apply his commandments within your life. You know, we laid this Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 6 out on the foundation is because that's something we're going to build on top of. And you have to fear God, brothers and sisters. You have to. You know, this is a part of your walk. Because guess what? Hey, if you don't fear God, then it's easy to act a fool. It truly is. I mean, hey, you come in my neighborhood, you bring a camera, you can record foolishness going about from sun up to sundown. That's easy. But the hard part is keeping this man under subjection. This hard part is snapping when somebody don't did you wrong and you knowingly that they did you wrong. That's the hard part. But guess what that all comes with? Fear, brothers and sisters. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go over to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 15. And we just laying down the foundation. And the foundation is, you know, hey, the beginning of the title. Obey is better than sacrifice. So you being obedient, hey, that's far more greater than you sacrificing animals unto God. Because you are obeying, right? 1 Samuel 15, to pick it up at 22, when you get it, Go ahead and take off, bro. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? And this is Samuel addressing Saul as he came back from the slaughter. And Saul was supposed to kill 
everything dealing with the Amalekites, everything. He was supposed to destroy it all the way down to the ground. Hey, can y'all grab us two bottles of water? He was supposed to destroy us all. Saul was supposed to destroy the Amalekites all the way down to the ground. You know, nothing was supposed to be saved. Nothing. So now, you know, Saul come back from the battle and he got the spoils of war with him. He also brought back what? Agag, the king of the Amalekites. He brought him back with him, but hey, Everybody was supposed to be slaughtered. So now Samuel is addressing Saul because God got in the ear of Samuel. And now Samuel is addressing Saul on this situation. So read 22 for me again at the top, bro. And Samuel said, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? Keep reading. As in obeying the voice of the Lord? Go ahead. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of ram. You see that obedience is far greater than you sacrificing animals to God. You know, that's what Samuel is getting at dealing with Saul. Saul was being disobedient. So it all ties back to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Hey, if you take the word of God, Saul, and apply it, kill everything, guess what? You're going to live. But guess what occurred? You know, in this instance, that wasn't the case. There you go, bro. That wasn't the case. You know, so we see in what the bottom of verse 22, it says, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. What is saying 23 though? For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You see what rebellion gets you and what else? And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And we hear the term, oh, you just stubborn, you know, but guess what stubbornness gets you? Hey, it is compared to iniquity and idolatry. You know, even rebellion, when you're rebelling against God, guess what? Hey, that's worse than witchcraft. Mm. You sit in the same category with witches, you know, when you rebelling against God. So let's understand, brothers and sisters, is that, hey, you have to obey. That's why the title is what? Obey is better than sacrifice. Circumcise the foreskin of thy heart. Because we're going to see inside the class that, hey, physically circumcision is on the table as well as spiritual. So we see is that what? In the, in the top of 23, it says, For rebellion is as sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. What else it reads? Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. Keep reading. He hath also rejected thee from being king. And Saul got sat down. You know, God turned his mind over, reprobate, moved him out of the way, and put king in his position. I'm sorry, put David as king in his position. You know, that's what occurred with all of this. But, hey, this was the boiling point. You know, obedience, obeying, brothers and sisters. Let's go over to Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25, right? You know, man has a problem with obeying God. You know, he truly does. You know, people come up with, you know, doctrines that, ah, you know, circumcision is too barbaric. You know, the state of California, you know, some years ago, they was actually trying to do away with circumcising young boys because they were saying that it was too barbaric. But, you know, even when you tell these doctors today, hey, man, I got to circumcise my child on the eighth day. You know, they give you all kind of flack. You know, what are you, Jewish? Nah, it's, it's, this is a custom that was given from God. And guess who it came with? Abraham, you know, the father of our faith. But, hey, in order for you to understand and comprehend these things, you got to be having, you got to be willing to have a ready mind, willing to receive. But let's look at this Proverbs 25, Proverbs 25. And let's pick it up at verse 11, Proverbs 25 and verse 11. When you get it, you can read it, bro. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pitches of silver. You see that apples of gold in pitches of silver. You know, that's a perfect, beautiful picture. You know, that's why I saying, hey, a word fitly spoken. You know, hey, it's just like that beautiful picture when you look at apples of gold, you know, in pictures of silver, right? What is it in verse 12, though? As an earring of gold. Go ahead. And an ornament of fine gold. So we're looking at precious, you know, jewelry or whatever you want to call it, you know. But it's showing a picture of how, you know, precious a apple and gold and a picture of silver. That's, that's pretty much a, a precious look, right? But look at what it's comparing it to. Keep reading, bro. 
So is a wise reprover. Go ahead. Upon an, obe an obedient ear. You see that a wise reprover. You know, like we ain't coming correcting nobody out of our own back pocket. Nah, we coming and reproving according to the Bible. But then it says what? It says, but the one that's hearing it, what? It gave them the title of an obedient ear. That means when they reproved, hey, they ain't kicking up combating. Nah, they being obedient because guess what? It is what thus say the Lord. That's why we looked at Deuteronomy chapter 8 because that's the disclaimer. That's the foundation. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God is how you're going to live, brothers and sisters. So we see in what Proverbs 25 and verse 12, at the bottom of that, it says, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. Let's go to Genesis 17. Now let's look at the course of the class. You know, because we lay it out there, you know, to obey is better than sacrifice. So it's kind of like, hey, when we see this and we read it, you know, we can't back paddle. You know, we, you know, we can't look at the idea that, nah, man, it's, it's, that's too hard on a child. Nah, you know, it's perfect for the child, you know, especially if you're trying to seek salvation according to what's written. This is not a, you know, a choice. This is a commandment. So let's look at Genesis 17 and let's read verses one through four. When you get it, you can read it, bro. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, Go ahead. the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. So walk before me and be perfect. You know, that's what he told Abram before he changed his name to Abraham. We're going to see that. But, hey, he looked at Abram when he was, what, 90 years old and nine. 90 years, 99 years of age is when he saw Abram and he told him, what, Walk before me and be thou perfect. What is that in verse 2, bro? And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. So the covenant is on the table. This is the conversation. And we're going to see inside of this covenant, there's a token of the covenant inside of this covenant that God is making with Abram. And what? This token we're going to see in the new book, it is a token of your righteousness. Right? But we're going to get to it. I ain't going to let the cat out the bag. We're going to let the Bible explain it. What is it in verse 3, bro? And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, Keep reading. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. So thou shalt be a father of many nations, right? We ain't in, it ain't in the handout, but read verse 5, though. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram. Keep reading. But thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. So his name went from Abram to Abraham. Ham meaning father of many nations. You know, so now, you know, this covenant is not just for Abram. It's for Abraham. Because what? Now Abraham is father of many nations, right? Not just the Israelites. Because we know is that what? Hey, Isaac came out of Abraham, then Jacob, then the 12 tribes. But nah, it's not just for Abraham's lineage. It's for all nations that are be are willing to fear God and keep the commandments, right? Skip down to verse 10 for me and read that, bro. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Go ahead. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. So every man child among you shall be circumcised, right? Every, keep reading. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. Go ahead. And it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. So this is the covenant. God even told Abraham, you have to circumcise yourself as well. Abraham being 99 years of age, hey, he had to cut the foreskin of his flesh. Mm -hmm. So just letting you know is that, hey, you just came into this word 30, 40 years later. Hey, 30, 40 years later, you coming into the word. If you aren't physically circumcised, hey, you have to get the procedure done. Because we see what Abraham covering the bases. We see that Abraham is 99 years of age. This is when God made the covenant with him. So the same circumcision covenant that he made with Abraham, 
applies to Abraham, he himself, right? What else it reads, bro? Verse 12. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Go ahead. Every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or brought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. You see how broad God is covering this pertaining to the man child? You know, he's letting you know is that, hey, this circumcision is not just for Abraham and his lineage. You know, it went far as into, hey, if you bought for money or if you bought with money, he even said what? Hey, of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. Clearly letting you know is that this just doesn't apply with Abraham. This applies with everybody that's trying to get like Abraham. Right? What else it reads, bro? Verse 13. He that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with thy money, must needs be circumcised. Keep reading. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. So every time you go to the restroom, man, hey, you're looking at the covenant between you and God. Every time you go into the bathroom. Because what? Hey, you are supposed to be rolling away the foreskin of your heart. That's what it's pointing to. We're going to see that. But what you're doing physically is being obedient unto God. You're obeying. So we see it's that way. Hey, this established with Abraham, right? What is that 14 though? And the uncircumcised man, child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. Keep reading. He has broken my covenant. You see that? Hey, you breaking the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you breaking the covenant that he established with Abraham. See, you got to realize God going to do what he say he's going to do. You know what I mean? Like what he say he's going to do, he's going to lay it out there plain as it possibly can be. And it's going to marvel you or blow your mind. It's because of the fact that, hey, God has put you in the position to not allow you to stumble back on your word. See, this is the God we serve. So in other words, hey, he laid it out there. Hey, on the eighth day, you need to circumcise that man child that is born. But guess what? Hey, if you pass the eighth day, you still need to have this procedure taken care of. And not only if you don't do so, guess what you're being? Like Saul. Saul was being rebellion. And it said rebellion is like witchcraft. It says stubbornness is like idolatry. Now, I can understand during the time we're in, hey, it's pretty hard economically for those to have this procedure taken care of. But, hey, if you are willing to do so, hey, God will make a way. So you got to realize, like, what? Up there in, get, up there in um, Riverdale, Illinois, <laughs> they had a clinic up there. And the clinic is... Allow the procedure to take its course. Yeah, it's a, you know, a few hundred dollars. A lot of people may not have a few hundred dollars, but guess what? <laughs> you getting these stimulus checks. <laughs> so with these stimulus checks, hey, if you want to, you can get it done. In other words, it's all about right here, brothers and sisters. It truly is. But we see is that what? In verse 14, God said, hey, if you don't obey and keep this commandment, you're going to be cut off, right? Skip down to 24 and read that for me, bro. And Abraham was 19 years old and nine. Go ahead. When he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Amazing. This man was all one year from being 100, and he circumcised himself. You know, He didn't go to a, you know, a doctor or have this procedure done. Nah, he did it himself. But he did it at 99 years of age. What is he saying, 25, bro? And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old. Go ahead. When he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Keep reading. In the self-same day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael, his son. Go ahead. And all the men of his house, born in the house, and bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 20, I mean chapter 12. Leviticus 12. You know, it didn't just stop right there in Genesis 17. Now, nah, this is law, brothers and sisters. We're going to read it, and we're going to get some understanding on it, all right? Leviticus chapter 12, let's pick it up at verse 1 through 3. When you get it, you can read it, bro. And the Lord speaking to Moses, saying, Keep reading. Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, Keep going. Then shall he be... Un 
then shall I'm sorry, then she shall be unclean seven days. Go ahead. According to the days of the separation from her infirmity, shall she be unclean. Verse three. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. You see that the eighth day of his foreskin shall be circumcised. You know, that's rolling away the flesh. We can even look at inside the class that, hey, that has some ties, you know, to the eighth day. You know, we probably can't read much of it, but, you know, we can we can look at the ideal and just realize, OK, on the eighth day, you rolling away the foreskin of your flesh, even on the eighth day into the father's kingdom before he come down to this earth. What you going to still have flesh? And what, when his kingdom is down on this earth, you're going to have the flesh being rolled away and now you're going to be spiritual. So, you know, we can have some significance behind it, but we see is that what? In Leviticus chapter 12, we see is that the commandment is on the table that if you have a man child on the eighth day, you're supposed to have them circumcised. Let's keep going though. Let's go over to Exodus chapter four. Exodus chapter four, and we're going to read a couple of verses here. Exodus chapter four. And let's pick it up at verse 24. <laughs> Exodus chapter 4 and verse 24. When you get it, you can read it, bro. And it came to pass by the way in the end that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Sought to kill who? Moses. Mm -hmm. Why? Keep reading. Then Zipporah, I'm sorry, then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son. So they didn't have scalpels, brothers and sisters. They had sharp rocks. <laughs> But we see is that what? The wife, you know, Zipporah, who wasn't even of the nation of Israel, you know, she was of the Moabites or Median, the Medianites. I'm sorry, the Medianites, you know, her father was Jethro. But guess what? Hey, she understood the memo. And she sees that what? She took the sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son. What else it reads? And cast it at his feet. Keep reading. And said surely a bloody husband art thou to me. You see that? Hey, you a bloody husband because God was fit to kill you. Right? Keep reading. What else it says? Verse 26. So he let him go. Then she said a bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. You see how critical this circumcision is? You know, God was fit to kill the most beakest man of the Bible. Because what? He was being disobedient. Or oh, it probably slipped his mind. Not saying that he was just willfully being disobedient. I don't know. We can't really read that. But we see is that God is not a respect of a person. You know, most the most meekest was about to get slaughtered right here. But you know, due to the wife that he had, she took a sharp stone and she went about and circumcised the child. Let's go over to Luke chapter 2 now. You know, let's go to Luke chapter two and let's see did anything change with Jesus. You know, did Jesus, you know, when he came on the scene, because a lot of people want to say in Colossians chapter two is that what he nailed to the cross was the commandments. You know, even some of us say that was animal sacrifice, but we ain't going to really deal with that. We're just looking at the fact that, hey, those wasn't nailed to the cross, the commandments. Nah, not at all. Because if they were nailed to the cross, I understand Jesus isn't dead at this point, but he's God. God can, you know, he can change things up if he would like. <laughs> this is God. You know, we dealing with his playbook. So in other words, we just the players, you know, he's the coach. So if he want to audible, he can audible if he want, you know, but let's see if he audible. Luke chapter two, and let's pick it up at verse 21. Luke two and 21, when you get it, go ahead and read it. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision, circumcising of the child, Go ahead. his name was called Jesus. His name was called Jesus. Keep reading. Which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So his name was already Jesus before he was conceived. Right? But we see is that what in verse 21 at the top it says, and when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child. So Jesus was circumcised on the eighth day. But what is saying 22 though? And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished. You see that? So even the woman went about her days of purification. Just what we read in Leviticus chapter 12. You know, the laws are still good, brothers and sisters. Obey is better than sacrifice. So Jesus didn't come on the scene, you know, doing away with it. Nah, he was showing you how to keep the commandments in this sinful body. 
and even his family, they were still keeping the commandments also. Because we see is that what? In 22, hey, and when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, what else? They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Let's go over here to Acts 15 now. Let's get into Acts, the New Testament, because a lot of people will come to the new book and they'll try to hide behind the letters of Paul. That's what they will do. And we're going to see inside the class is that, hey, Paul didn't say nothing different from what we read in Genesis, what we saw in Leviticus, what we saw almost occurred with Moses when he was about to be killed, or better yet, what Jesus did in Luke chapter 2. He didn't come on the scene and say or do anything different, you know. He was just going about it on a wise manner to convert souls. That's what it was about. But let's deal, let's deal with the matter though. Acts 15, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1 through 5. Acts 15, verses 1 through 5. When you get it, go ahead and read it, bro. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the man of Moses, ye cannot be saved. So this is the topic of conversation. You know, salvation and circumcision. Because that's what they said in the end of verse 1. You know, they said, hey, if you can't be circumcised after the manner of Moses, guess what? You can't receive salvation. You can't be saved. So what is it say in verse 2, bro? When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dis disputation with them. So they had, you know, a little debate was going about, you know, a little discord, you know. It wasn't on one accord pertaining to this matter. That's what they was trying to make it seem. Keep reading though. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem until the apostles and elders about this question. So this is the question at hand. You know, we dealing with, hey, if they not circumcised after the manner of Moses, they can't be saved. This is the manner or this is the topic that they are going to go about the elders in Jerusalem and deal with this matter. Keep reading though. What is it saying? Verse 4. I'm sorry, three, go ahead. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria. He reading. Declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. So this is also on the topic of conversation. You know, because they're amongst Gentiles. They're amongst white folks. You know, that's what we call them today. But the Bible categorized them as Gentiles. The seed of Japheth. So, you know, even when you look at, you know, in the New Testament, also those that Aren't Israel would be categorized as Gentiles also. But in this manner, hey, we dealing with Japheth, the Gentile, right? So guess what? Hey, on their way, they are declaring the conversion of the Gentiles because that's what it's about also. That's why in verse 1, they talking about in order for any other nation or the Gentiles particularly to be saved, they got to be circumcised after the manner of Moses. What is it saying in the bottom of verse 3, bro? And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. What is it saying in verse 4? And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. Skip down to verse 9 and read that for me. Okay. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Go ahead. And now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? So we wasn't even able to bear this. Why put this yoke about the apostles' neck? Why? You know, hey, our forefathers couldn't even bear this. You know, you go back and read in the book of Numbers, when our forefathers came out of Egypt, what? Joshua had to circumcise the children that wasn't of the war, over because they wasn't circumcised you know i think that's either in numbers or in the book of joshua but hey our forefathers couldn't even bear it so why put this yoke about the apostles neck because what we saw in verse 9 it says and put no difference between us and them purify their hearts by faith because they believe you know how you gonna say you can't be saved but yet you believe in the same god that you know you serve them. They believe, but yet they can't be saved. What is it say in verse 12, bro? We did? Go back and read it, though. 
Yeah, but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, Go ahead. which believed, saying reading. that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Appreciate that, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that because that's a that's a critical verse. Right, right. You know, that's an important verse. All of the verses are important, but that's one that you know we really want to deal with. Why this was supposed to be taken before the elders. You know, because it says in verse five, it says, but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Let's understand this, brothers and sisters, being baptized and circumcision have nothing to do with one another. You know, hey, God is the one that pondered the mind of the heart of men. You know, so for somebody to get circumcised. Or for somebody to want to be baptized, hey, baptize them. You know, but to just say that in order for you to be baptized, you got to be circumcised because that's what we're dealing with. That's what we're dealing with right here. And we see is that what? In verse five, they said what? And there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believe saying that it is needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. That's true indeed. But for them that receive salvation, they got to be circumcised? Nah, they don't. We're going to deal with that. Now, let's read it all over again. Skip down to nine and read that. And put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith. You see that? Purifying their hearts by faith. There's no difference. You know, hey, we circumcised and we keep in the faith. They uncircumcised, but yet they keep in the same faith. Like, there's no difference. But we're going to keep reading, though. What else it says? Verse 10. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? Keep going. Which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. Verse 11. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. You see that? Hey, we're going to be saved through the blood of Christ. (laughs) We're going to see inside this class is that that statement is not taking circumcision off the table. Nah, we just looking at the fact that even keeping the commandments alone couldn't give you everlasting life. Christ had to come and shed his blood. So it's very broad when it comes to the blood of Christ being shed for the sins of the world. It's very broad because it's not doing away with circumcision, nor is it doing away with the commandments. It's just letting you know that now your justification is in the blood of Christ. Keep reading though. What else it says, bro? Yeah, skip down to 14 and read. Nah, keep reading. Okay, keep reading. Okay. Yeah. Then all the multitude kept silence uh-huh. and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Keep reading. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Seamoth had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles keep going. to take out of them a people for his name. You see that? To take out of a people for his name. You know, this is the conversion all about. That's why when they passed about, you know, in verse three, I'm sorry, in ver- yeah, in verse three, you know, they passed about declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. The brothers was glorifying of this because salvation isn't just for the Jew. It's for all nations. That's why we dealt with Genesis 17 to show you is that, hey, Abraham is going to be a father of many nations, right? Skip down to verse 24 and read that for us. 14 through 21, keep reading. Nah, 14, 24 through 27. I don't know what's up. Don't hand that. Hold on, what I'm looking at. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, 14 through 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm looking. Where well, I need a pen, man? Let me get a pen. Somebody got a pen? Yeah, I just got caught up in the, what we read in Genesis 17. Go ahead and read. Keep reading through 21. Um, 15. And to disagree the words of the prophets as it is written, after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and, the, and will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Go ahead. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Who doeth all these things. Keep going, though. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. You see that? All his works is from the beginning of the world. It didn't just start in the book of Acts. All his works was from the beginning of the world. What is it say in verse 19? Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them 
which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. You see that? Hey, we ain't going to trouble them with this matter. You know, being circumcised after the manner of Moses. Because we're going to see in the book of Acts, right? We're going to see is that, you know, the whole while, you know, they was lying on Paul and Barnabas. You know, they wasn't doing away with circumcision. Because we're going to see is that Paul circumcised Timothy and Titus. You know, so we're going to realize that, hey, it was a certain sect going about trying to discredit or defame the name of Paul. That's what occurred. When you read Acts 15 through 28, chapter 28, you will realize that Paul being on trial wasn't even about being circumcised. It was about other matters pertaining to Christ. But we're going to get there. Keep going, though. What else to read, bro? But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols. Go ahead. And from fornication. Keep reading. And from things strangled and from blood. So this is what we're going to deal with them on. We're we not going to really hit them with, you got to be circumcised after the manner of Moses. Because that'll be tough. You know, you're trying to bring even Israel at this point in time. You know, Israel just walking in the word and they waking up. And you hit them with, hey, man, in order for you to be saved, you got to be circumcised after the manner of Moses. That's going to probably be a stumbling block. You know, they're going to probably be like, well, nah, if it take all that to serve that God, I'm cool. So even, you know, not just dealing with Gentiles at this point in time, but even dealing with Israel. But we understand is that what? The covenant was always with Israel. But guess what Paul is doing? Paul is laying down the basis. He's laying down the foundation as to how we're going to deal with them. He said, guess what? Hey, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. Because what it said in verse 21? For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. So we're going to cover this matter. You know, we're going to cover Genesis 17. Because we already covered it in this class. But guess what? Hey, dealing with the Gentiles, guess what we're going to do? We're going to run into Genesis 17, what God went into this covenant with pertaining to Abraham, that you have to be circumcised. You know, we're going to get to that point. You know, we're going to read about, you know, how, you know, this was a covenant or the token of your righteousness. We're going to deal with that. But what we're going to build with them right out the gate we're going to tell them to stop messing with idols. Stop fornicating. You know, stop eating unclean foods. You know, that's something that can be easily swallowed. You know, that's a pill that can be swallowed. <laughs> but you, when you come at somebody with, hey, man, you got to cut into your foreskin physically. Man, that's a tough pill to swallow. So Paul was just really being crafty. We're going to see that. Let's go over into Acts 16 now. Acts 16, and we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Because we're going to see is that Paul was not doing away with circumcision physically, brothers and sisters. He was just going about being crafty to convert the Gentiles. That's what he was doing. And we're going to even see inside the classes that, hey, there's a spiritual side to this circumcision. The spiritual side is you removing the foreskin from your heart. You being willing to be obedient to God all the way to death. You know, that's the spiritual side that we're going to touch on within this class. But let's look at this Acts 16 and we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Acts 16 verses 1 through 3. When you get it, you can read it, bro. Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Tim Timotheus, uh -huh. the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed, but put, I'm sorry, but, and believed, but his father was a Greek. You see that his mother was a Jewish and his father was a Greek. So, you know, Timothy, you know, he was taught, you know, the word. I can assure you he was, you know, because if he wasn't, he probably would be rolling with Paul. But we see is that what? He's a Greek, though. He's not an Israelite. He's a Greek or a Gentile. And what it said in verse two, though, which was well reported of by thy brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. So the this was well known. It wasn't no secret who Timothy was. You know, it wasn't no secret who his father was, apparently. Because it said in verse 2, it says what? Which was well reported of by the brethren. In other words, everybody knew who Timothy was. They knew he had to be a Greek, right? 
What it say in verse three though? Cause look at what Paul did pertaining to this matter of circumcision as to what we read in chapter 15. What it say in verse three, bro? Him would Paul have to go forth with him. Go ahead. And took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters. So apparently these Jews that was in these quarters, they must was looking. <laughs> they, they must was doing checks. You know, like drop your pants and let's see. That, that's probably what they was doing. You know, so this is why Paul did what he did. He didn't just bypass the law. No, he actually implemented the law on Timothy. You know, and it says that what? For they, they knew all that his father was a Greek. You see that? Hey, his father was a Greek. He was well reported amongst the brethren. So they knew that Timothy was a Greek. So guess what? He went with the custom that we could read or read in Genesis 17. Let's keep going though. Let's go over to Acts 24 now. Acts 24. Acts 24 because now we're looking at, you know, Paul being put through the trial. You know? Because that's what's going about now. You know, Paul's name has been defamed. So now he got this name on him that he's teaching against the laws of God. That's what was said. But is this truly the case as to what he's really being trial for or on trial for? Acts 24, let's pick it up at verse 8 through 21. Acts 24, 8 through 21. When you get it, you can read it, bro. Commanding his accusers to come unto thee by examining of whom thyself makest take knowledge of all these things, wherefore we accuse him. You see that? Hey, he like, hey, y'all accusing me of these matters. In other words, prove me, right? What is that in verse 9? And the Jews also assented, saying, that these things were so. Keep reading. Then Paul, after the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, For as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself. So I'm going to answer for myself. Paul is dealing with Felix, you know. Felix is a judge over this particular region of land, and he's being put on trial, you know. And his trial isn't even about what we read in Acts 15 being circumcised after the manner of Moses. He's being put on trial is because he's preaching Jesus. He's preaching the resurrection from the dead. That's what he's preaching, and he's being put on trial for this matter. When you go and read after chapter 16, we're not dealing with circumcision anymore. And we can clearly read in Acts 16 and 1, Paul didn't do away with circumcision because what? He circumcised Timothy, right? But in chapter 15, hey, they went before the elders pertaining to this issue. And the elders looked at the fact that, hey, man, just deal with them pertaining to the basis. Make sure they don't be fornicating. Make sure they don't be dealing with idolatry. Make sure they don't be eating things that's unclean. Because guess what? Hey, the law of Moses is read every Sabbath. So we're going to cross that barrier. We're going to cross that. But what we're going to do is be crafty about converting the Gentiles. Keep going, though, bro. Where you at? 11. Go ahead and read it. Because that thou mayest understand that thou art yet but 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship. Verse 12. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man. Go ahead. Neither raising of the people. Keep reading. Neither in the synagogues, nor in the city. So they lying. They got false accusations out on Paul. That's what they're doing. They lying. What is it saying in verse 13? Neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. So they can't even prove the things that they're trying to accuse him of. They are lying. Bringing up false accusations. Keep going though, 14. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my father. Go ahead. Believing all things. What else? Which are written in the law and in the prophets. Hold on. He believing in the things written in the law and the prophets. What was written in the law and the prophets? Circumcising after the on the eighth day. We read that in Genesis 17. That's the law and the prophets. We also read in the law and the prophets pertaining to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Every word that proceed out of the mouth of God is how man shall leave. Hey. He is reading or dealing with out of the law of the prophets. Paul did not come behind the law and the prophets and come up with something new. He didn't. He was just dealing with a wiser way of converting the Gentiles. But we see is that what? In the bottom of verse 14, it says what? 
I, the God of, I'm sorry, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. 15. And have hope toward God. Keep reading. Which they themselves also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead both of the just and unjust. And this is the issue of the matter that's at hand, brothers and sisters. You know, this is the issue. The issue is, hey, y'all are so caught up on, hey, I'm preaching Jesus. You know, I'm talking about the resurrection of the dead. You know, of the just and the unjust. And you know is that everybody going to resurrect. <laughs> but this is the matter. This is what's at hand. We already got some thanks, though. Keep reading though, what it's saying, 16. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscious void of offense toward God and toward men. You see that Paul is keeping a conscious mind towards, you know, not offending God nor offending man. And this is what he's been doing, brothers and sisters. So if he's not trying to offend God, then why would he be trying to do away with circumcision? He would be offending God if he's trying to do away with that. Ah, he's just trying to be wise about the conversion. Keep reading though. What else is saying 17? Now, after many years, I came to bring alms to my nation and offering. Go ahead. Whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult. You see that? They found me in the temple with no multitude nor with the tumult. Keep reading. Who ought to have been here before thee and object if they had all against me. You see that? Hey, the Jews that told Paul to go about and shave his head and purify himself, they the ones that brought him in the temple, and they had no issue with Paul. Paul is letting you know is that, hey, these are the men that brought me in the temple. Why aren't they here with me today if they had issue? Because apparently they didn't have issue. Apparently, a false accusation is being brought about on Paul, not even pertaining to circumcision, but pertaining to the resurrection of the dead. That's what this is all about. Keep going. Or what else it reads? Or else let these same here say, if if they have found any evil doing in me while I stood before the council, keep reading. Except it be for this one voice that I cry standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead. I am called in question by you this day. You see that? This is why I'm before you this day, Felix. Let's go over here to Acts 25 now. Acts 25. And we're going to read verses 1 through 8. Acts 25, verses 1 through 8. Because we're going to look at Paul went through what? Felix? He went through Festus? Then he's going to go through King Agrippa. And guess what we're looking at? we just building, just looking at, hey, Paul didn't come and do away with circumcision. As he's been on trial, he's not even been trialed for what we read in Acts 15. He's not even been trialed for that. He's been trialed for something else. So we can't come into the New Testament or we can't come into the letters of Paul and try to seem as if like he coming up with something new pertaining to circumcision. Nah, we can't even do that. We understand that circumstances do stand and occur for people in situations pertaining to this law. We're not in the land of Jerusalem. We far away from our land. We're in the land of our captivity. So guess what we're doing? We're doing the best that we can while we are here within captivity. So I say all of that to say is, hey, your child being born on the eighth day, he might can't get circumcised on the eighth day due to some health issues. Who knows? But that's why I said pertaining to the Psalms is that God is the one that pondered the heart or the mind of man. So in other words, hey, if your intentions is trying to please God, God knows all of this. But what we're dealing with is the doctrine that, hey, you don't have to be physically circumcised anymore. It's because Christ is, you know, the reason for all of that, that we no longer have to do so. We just showing through the Bible that isn't the case. That isn't the case. So let's look at this Acts 25, and we're going to read verses 1 through 8. Acts 25, verses 1 through 8. When you get it, go read and read it. Now when Festus was coming to the province, after three days he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Keep going. Then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him, and desired favor against him that he would send for him to Jerusalem, laying wait in the way to kill him. You see that? They're trying to kill Paul. You know, Paul being ran through the blade. 
They trying to kill him, you know, because they got it out for Paul. Paul once used to roll like the Pharisees, but you know, God showed him something different. Now he preaching Jesus, right? But guess what? They lying wait in the way to kill him, right? What does it say in verse four? But Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea. He read it. And that he himself would depart shortly thither. Verse five. Let them therefore say he, which among you are able, go down with me and accuse this man, if there be any wickedness in him. Verse six. And when he had tarried among them more than 10 days, he went down to Caesarea and the next day sitting on the judgment seat commanded Paul to be brought. Verse seven. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. You see that? They are laying grievous complaints. They couldn't prove any of it. Right? You know, at least they should be able to prove, but they can't even prove the complaints that they're trying to lay about pertaining to Paul. What is it say in verse 8, bro? And while he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar. Have I offended anything at all? You see that? He didn't offend anything, letting you know he did not do away with circumcision. He just said in verse 8, while he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews. What? The law of the Jews is what we read in Acts 15. You know, that's a law that we supposed to be keeping today. But guess what? He didn't speak against that, right? Then he also said, neither against the temple nor yet against Caesar. Have I offended anything? He's guilty. Let's go over to Acts 26 now. Acts 26. He's guilty. So he was just on trial with Festus. Now he's going to be on trial with King Agrippa. And let's see if anything changes. Because this, you know, this is what we got to deal with at hand, brothers and sisters. What's written according to the word of God. You know, we can't come about and allow the tradition or the doctrine of men to toss us to and fro. No, nah, we can't. The title is obey is better than sacrifice. So what you're trying to do is make sure your obedience can take you into everlasting life. That's what you're trying to do because what? Hey, God is the one that allowed every word out of his mouth to proceed. And this is the only way you can live based upon his words. So even Jesus, the one who got off the throne from being God, came in the form of a man and shed his blood for the sins of the world. Guess what? He's the one where your faith lies. Guess what? His faith is in what we read in Genesis 17. In order for you to get like Abraham, you got to do the works of Abraham. The works of Abraham, you're going to circumcise your male child on the eighth day. That's not going to change, brothers and sisters. But let's look at this Acts 26. Because now, you know, like I said, Paul is being ran through the blade. And he on trial now in front of Agrippa. Acts 26, verse 1 through 6. When you get it, go ahead and read it, bro. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. Go ahead. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I share answer for myself this day before thee, touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Keep reading. Especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. So Agrippa is an expert. You know, he know if you pulling a chamois, you know, that's what he's saying. Hey. Paul is letting them know right out the gate, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. What else it reads, bro? Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Keep going. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews. You know all the Jews. Go ahead, verse 5. Which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. You see that Paul was a Pharisee. Letting you know is that Paul being a Pharisee, why would he all of a sudden teach that you no longer have to physically circumcise yourself? Nah, he was a Pharisee. He just said what? Of the straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. 
Right? What does it say in verse 6? And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. Skip down to verse 14 and read that. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice. You're not right away. Yeah, you is. Okay, all right. I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Keep reading. It is hard for thee to kick against the brick. So Paul is taking you back to when he was blinded by this bright light, which was Jesus, you know, and the words that he heard because he couldn't see, he was blinded, but he heard and the words were spoken in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, hey, why persecutest thou me? You know, it's hard to kick against the pricks. What is it in 15? And I said, who art thou, old? who art thou, Lord? Go ahead. And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. Keep reading. But rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. What is it saying, 17? Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. You see, Paul is the light to the Gentiles. You know, we're going to read in the class that what? Peter was dealing with the Hebrews. Paul was dealing with the Gentiles. But we see is that what? Hey. It says, deliver thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to do what? Verse 18. To open their eyes. Keep reading. And to turn them from darkness to light. You see that? To turn them, to turn them from darkness to light. Right? What does this darkness represent? Go ahead. And from the power of Satan. So the power, power, so the power of Satan would be that darkness. But then it says, what unto God, who's that light? So this is what the whole conversion was about. When we go and read in Acts 15, they was being wise about it. But they was winning over souls for the kingdom of God. You know, that was the duty. That was the purpose of Paul. That's why God said through the mouth, I'm sorry, that's why God speaking through the mouth of through the mouth of Paul. I'm sorry, that's why God is speaking to Paul in this manner. He, he might be speaking through an angel. But he's saying what? Deliver thee from the people and from the Gentiles. You know, unto whom now I send thee. So Paul's duty was to be a light to the Gentiles. And he was to turn them from darkness unto light. Keep reading, bro. And from the power of Satan unto God. Keep reading. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. That is in me. Verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. So he wasn't disobedient to the vision that, you know, God showed them. What is it saying, verse 20? But shewed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. You see that? Turn to God and do works meet or worthy for repentance. Verse 21. For these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. And this is why they wanted to kill me. You know, not nothing dealing with circumcision because I was preaching Jesus. This is why, right? Let's go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 now. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We got the cat out the bag and we saw and read that, hey, Paul wasn't even being put on trial because he was doing away with circumcision nah he was put on trial because he was preaching Jesus the resurrection of the dead that's why he was being put on trial brothers and sisters so if that's not the case when we come into the New Testament then why or where are we getting that we don't have to be circumcised after the manner of Abraham nah it's not after the manner of Moses it's after the manner of Abraham Moses gave it to you in the law but God made the covenant with Abraham right so where are we getting this from? We're getting this from that darkness. The devil. Because it's not written within the Bible. We're going to see Peter even speak on this instance. Pertaining to how some get twisted by the letters of Paul. Acts 12. Let's pick it up at verse. Yeah. Acts. Acts first, I'm sorry. Second, second Corinthians. My bad. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Let's pick it up at verse 16. Second Corinthians 12. 16. Through 19. When you get it, go ahead and read it, bro. But be it so, I did not burden you, nevertheless. Hold on, I'm sorry. I'm in 1 Corinthians. Okay. Let me get that. 
No, no, you're right. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Okay, I got yeah, you. Yeah, I'm wrong. Okay, I got you. 2 Corinthians 12. Okay. We together. Go ahead. 16 through 19. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with God. You see that? Paul caught them with God. You know? He was being crafty. You know, when we go and look at how he was dealing with the conversion of the Gentiles, it was a crafty manner. You know, that's why Jesus say, you know, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. You know, it was a delicate situation because what? They was amongst Gentiles or white folks. That's, that's who they was amongst. So God was already using Paul as a light to the Gentiles. This was foretold of in the prophets that Paul was going to be, you know, one that was going to be converting other nations. So now by Paul going about converting other nations, hey, he was being crafty. That's why it says in what 16, but be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with God. What is it in 17? Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you? So I didn't make no gain, right? I didn't make, you know, any profit of this because that's what, it, it wasn't about that, Right? What is it saying, 18, bro? I desire Titus, and with him I sent a brother. You see that? Hey, I desire Titus, one of you, and I sent with Titus a brother. Keep reading. Did Titus make a gain of you? Did Titus, did he make a gain of you, or what, what else to read? Walk we not in the same spirit? Go ahead. Walk we not in the same steps? So we all walked in the same spirit and the same steps. You know, hey, I wasn't trying to make no gain of you. You know, we was of the same spirit. Guess what I was doing? I was being crafty. That's what I was doing. That's why I used Titus, <laughs> you know, because right at the gate, you probably wouldn't listen to me. So I use, you know, someone of the same seed of the Gentiles. I used Titus and I caught you with craftiness. That's what he said in verse 16, right? He said, but being so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, hey, I caught you with God. You know, that's how he caught you pertaining to you being converted. Let's go and look at it again in Genesis. I'm sorry, Galatians. Verse 19. Yeah, I'm sorry. Read 19 for me. Again, thank ye that we excuse ourselves unto you. Go ahead. We speak before God and Christ. This is what we're doing. We're speaking before God and Christ. Keep reading. But we do all things, dearly beloved. Keep going. For your edifying. For your edifying. That's what it's for, brothers and sisters. It's for your edification. That's what it's all about, right? He said in the bottom of verse 19, he said, but be we do, but we do all things. Dearly beloved, for your edifying. Now let's go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. And we're still looking at the epistles or the letters of Paul, you know. Acts is a, a really good book you want to read before you even start dealing with the epistles of Paul. Because in the book of Acts, you know, it's going to kind of give you an understanding on what he's dealing with in these different epistles. Because in the book of Acts, it's what? The Acts of the Apostles. You know, he was traveling about in particular parts of the world and he was converting, you know, the Gentiles. And he was going about ways of doing it through craftiness. Paul, Timothy, Titus, Barnabas, them boys, they rolled together and they was about God's business. Right? Let's look at this Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, we're going to read verse 1 through 7. Go ahead and read it, bro. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. So he said what? 14 years after, later, you know, I went back up to Jerusalem. I took Barnabas and Titus with me. Go ahead. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. Keep reading. But privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. You see that? Hey, I had to be private about how I was preaching this gospel because, hey, I had a certain sect of the Jews. Hey, they trying to get me caught up. You know, that's why we going... That's why we was reading the book of Acts. That's why we read in what? Acts 24, 25, and 26. Just showing you how Paul was being ran through the blade. You know, he was on trial in front of three 
different judges. One of them was a king. You know, Festus, Felix, or uh, Felix, Festus, and Agrippa. You know, he was before all of them standing on trial because what? A sect of the Jews was trying to bring up accusations on Paul that he was teaching contrary to the law of Moses, but they couldn't prove it. So this is why we are going in the book of Galatians and we are looking at, you know, where or in detail as to how all this was going about. So we see in what? In verse 2 it says, And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. What does it say in verse 3? But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. You see that? He agreed to be circumcised. Again, if Paul was doing away with circumcision, why are we reading this, brothers and sisters? Like what? We saw in Acts 16, he circumcised Timothy. Now we're looking at Titus. Hey, compel mean he agreed, meaning he wasn't kicking against it. Because what we see is that Timothy was a Greek. You know, Titus was of the Gentiles also. That's what we read in Corinthians, how he used them to be crafty caught them up in the gal. That's what it reads in what? 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 16. You know, he was being crafted, but we see is that, hey, it says, Titus, who was a Greek, he's also of the Gentiles, and it says that he was compelled to be circumcised, meaning he agreed to be circumcised. What it say in verse 4, bro? And that because of false brethren unaware is brought in, Go ahead. who came in me privately to spite out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. You see that? They trying to bring us into bondage because of the false brethren unaware. It's like they, they bringing up accusations about us. But, hey, man, we trying to do what's at hand. We trying to deal with preaching Jesus and the resurrection of the dead. That's what we dealing with. But, hey, they trying to bring us into bondage. What does it say in verse 5? To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Verse 6. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it make it no matter to me. Go ahead. God accepted no man's person. Keep reading. But they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. You see that? Paul didn't really care. You know, that's why he said in what? Verse 6. Whosoever they were, it make no matter to me. You know, I'm going to still keep the charge. I'm going to still do God's will. What is it say in verse 7, bro? But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the, oh, I'm sorry, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. So Peter dealt with the Hebrews. Paul dealt with the Gentiles. Right? But we see is that what? Hey, Titus was compelled to be circumcised. That means he agreed with it. So this brother wasn't against the law of Moses. These brothers was just bringing up a false accusation. You know, we saw in the Old Testament or in the law, hey, that this was a token of the covenant for an everlasting covenant. All the way into our time. Let's keep building. Though. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and we're going to look at verses 19 through 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 19 to, through 23. When you get it, you can read it, bro. For though I be free from all men, go ahead. yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. You see that? This is what it's all about. You know, we are servants unto you all, brothers and sisters. We are servants. You know, because we are trying to make sure we gain the more in this walk and in this lifetime. So it's not about my agenda. It's not about this brother's agenda. The agenda is God's will and we're trying to gain the more and more souls while we are alive in this lifetime, right? What is it say in verse 20 though? And unto the Jews I became as a Jew. You see that? Look at the craftiness behind Paul. You know, hey, he said unto the Jews, I became a Jew. What else it reads? That I might gain the Jews. You see that? He's trying to gain the Jews, so he's going to get just like the Jews. Keep reading. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. You see how wise he's being with 
converting those to the word of God. You know, as a Jew, he came like a Jew to gain the Jew. Then he said, what? To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. Because what? Hey, when you look at the Jews, that's not really necessarily saying they was keeping the law. That's just looking at them being a nation of Jews. So guess what? He trying to convert the Jews that ain't even dealing with the law. Now he went to the law. Those that are dealing with the law, I myself am under the law. I'm trying to gain those that are under the law. What is saying 21, bro? To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. You see that? Hey, this covers all categories. All categories. We can go and read in Ephesians how what? Hey, God was an alien to the other nations. You know? Because what? They didn't know God. So guess what Paul was doing? Hey, he was being wise or crafty about converting all, right? What else to say in verse 22? To the weak became I as, I as weak. Go ahead. That I might gain the weak. Keep reading. I have made all things to all men. To do what? That I might by all means save some. You see that? Hey, to save some. That's the objective. What is saying 23, bro? And this I do for the gospel's sake. You see that? He's doing this for the gospel. This is why it's not my will, nor this brother's will. We're going to start making them sit in here. Mm -hmm. They just they just be out there too lax. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, we're we going to start making them sit in here. Mm -hmm. Before we get an understanding. Yes, sir. <laughs> yep. Lord willing, come next Sabbath, we are going to be gathered in here. Yep. Read that verse again, bro. And this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you. You see that? Hey, he's doing this for the gospel's sake, brothers and sisters, you know, that I might be a partaker thereof with you. Right? So this ain't even all about Paul. This is about Paul trying to gain those to get into the kingdom of God that's going to be here on this earth. Let's go a little bit further, though. Let's go over to Romans chapter 4 now. Romans chapter 4, we see Paul being crafty, brothers and sisters. No, Paul is not doing away with circumcision. Yes, sir. He's not doing away with circumcision after the manner of Abraham. He's not doing that. He's just being wise about dealing with other nations when it comes to this matter. You ain't going to just make them, you know, drink the strong drink right out the gate when they never had strong drink a day in their life. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, you ain't going to do that. You might give them some wine. You know what I mean? You might give them some salt. You know, just to reel them into the strong drink. They may not never want to drink strong drink ever in their life. The analogy is that you ain't going to just jump right out the gate with you got to be circumcised after the manner of Moses. Nah, you ain't going to do that right out the gate. All right? So let's look at this Romans chapter 4. Let's look at this Romans chapter 4 because this Romans chapter 4 is going to take you all the way back to Genesis 17. Right? Pertaining to Abraham. Romans chapter 4, let's pick it up at verse 9. When you get it, go ahead and read it, bro. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only Go ahead. or upon the uncircumcision also. Keep reading. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. So we see that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. But we're not dealing with, you know, in verse 9, you know, physical circumcision and physical uncircumcision. We're dealing with nations. Because what? Israel would be called the circumcised or the circumcision. And non-Israelites would be called the uncircumcision. Right? That's what we read in verse 9. What is it in verse 10, though, bro? How was it, it, well, how was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? So now we're looking at Abraham's righteousness. And we're looking at his righteousness. Was his righteousness counted for when he was physically circumcised or physically uncircumcised? What did it read, bro? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. You see that? Hey, his righteousness was counted for when he was uncircumcised, right? What did it say in verse 11? And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet been uncircumcised. You see that? The seal of righteousness. 
That's what the token of your circumcision is, the seal of righteousness. That's what Abraham received when he wasn't even physically circumcised. He received that when he was physically uncircumcised. That's why we read in Genesis 17 is that what? Hey, he was 90 years, 99 years of age. Then God went into this covenant. Then after that is when he circumcised himself and he circumcised Ishmael. And those that was born of him or those that was brought with money. But hey, God went into this covenant with him when he was not physically circumcised. Keep reading though, bro. What else to say? That he might be the father of all them that believe. Keep reading. Though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. You see that? That righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Right? But it said in the bottom of verse on the half of 11, it says, He had yet uncircumcised and be might, and that he might be the father of all them that believe. Though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them. But we're going to keep reading because when you read that, it seems as if Paul is dismissing you being physically circumcised. Let's keep going. What else is saying in verse 12, bro? And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only. You see that? Only. He says, and the father of the circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but what else? But who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. You see that? Hey, it's not only applied to those that are of the circumcision, but also to those that walk after the faith. Let you know it's that, hey, you need this physical circumcision in order to walk after the faith of Abraham, Right? Keep reading though, bro. What else to say? Verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Go ahead. Keep reading. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. Keep reading. And the promise made of non-effect. So, you know, hey, if the, if, if it says that if the righteousness, or it says for if they which are of the law, right, be heirs, Faith is made void and the promise is made of non effect, right? Because you can't just, you know, base this on just the law. Nah. Because if so, Jesus is made void. That's who the faith is. Mm -hmm. But let's keep reading. Now, what is it in 15? Because the law worketh wrath. For where is, for what, I'm sorry, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Keep going. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end of. To the end, the promise might be to be sure to all to see. Pay, pay attention to these next words that we read and keep going. Not to that only which is of the law. Hold on. It said not to that only which is of the law. So it's clearly letting you know us that, hey, Paul isn't throwing circumcision out with the bathwater. Mm -hmm. Nah, he's not doing that. Because it says, therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. Mm -hmm. To the end, the promise might be sure to all see, not to that only which is of the law, but what else? But to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. James said it. James said it well. He said you need both faith and works. Mm -hmm. You know, it's saying the same exact thing in this verse 16. You need them both, not just the law only. But to that also, which is of the faith of Abraham. Keep going. Who is father of us all. You see that? Who is father of us all. So if it's like we trying to get like father Abraham, guess what? Hey, we got to do the works of father Abraham. Right? But let's keep building though. Let's go over to Romans chapter 3 now. Romans chapter 3. Because, hey, when you understand the epistles of Paul, nah, man, he ain't doing nothing strange here. It's just that you might be unlearned. So by you being unlearned, I'm saying that from a, a humble standpoint, you know, is that, hey, because I was unlearned at once upon a time. So I'm not, you know, boasting at the fact that you unlearned. I'm just saying it from a standpoint that, hey, the Bible says with all your getting, get understanding. So you want to get understanding on this matter before you just do away with it. Because you man, you not God. 
If God ain't doing away with it, how can man come behind and do away with it? If that was the case, this Bible wouldn't be any good. It wouldn't be because you would have contradicting on top of contradiction. You truly would, but we already don't establish that Paul ain't doing away with circumcision. He just trying to get like the Gentiles. That's what he was doing. That's why he used Titus. That's why he used Timothy, because he was being crafty and he caught them in God. That's what he did. But let's look at this Romans chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 29 through 30, because a lot of people, you know, like I was saying earlier in the class, hey, you try to get your child circumcised on the eighth day, the doctor would be like, hey, what, you Jewish? <laughs> nah, this has nothing to do with you being Jewish. This has something to do with what we finna read in Romans chapter 3 and verse 29. Go ahead and read that, bro. Is he the God of the Jews only? That's a rhetorical question because look at what the answer reads. Keep going. Is he not also of the Gentiles? Go ahead. Yes, of the Gentiles also. So God is over all Jew and Gentile. You know, we can read the protocol of the orders dealing with the Jew, but guess what? God is over the Jew and the Gentile. In other words, hey, God is over all mankind. Whether you fear him or not, hey, he's still God over you because guess what? When you don't fear him, he got a lake of fire waiting for you. That's what he got waiting for you when you don't want to obey him. He got that reserved at the last day waiting for you. So guess what? He got over you, you know? Hey, you die unto God, you live unto God. Paul said that in the book of Romans also. But we see is that what? Hey, it said in verse 29, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. What is it say in verse 30, bro? Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith. Go ahead. And uncircumcision through faith. You see that? Hey, Jesus is the justification. You know? That's why what it says, one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. What it say in verse 31? Do we then make void the law through faith? You see that? Hey, are we going to just say, you know what? We ain't even got to deal with being circumcised after the man of Abraham because we believe. That's the question on the table, right? What's the answer, bro? God forbid. God forbid what we do with the law. Yeah, we establish the law. You see that? We establish the law, brothers and sisters. Paul is clearly letting you know us, hey, we keep the law. We ain't throwing out the circumcision. Nah, we, we just coming at you from a different angle. Understanding as these letters or these epistles that Paul is addressing or writing, dealing with Gentiles. Europeans, white folks. That's who Paul is dealing with when he's writing these letters. So guess what? He's clearly saying, hey, we established the law. Let's keep building though. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And we're going to read 17 through 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 17 through 19. When you get it, go ahead and read it. But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called everyone, so let him walk, as so and so ordained I, I, in all churches. So you know, I've I've heard brothers come here and they use this to say that we ain't got to really be circumcised. <laughs> well, is that the case? You got to realize, like God said, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every fact be established. So if this isn't fitting with what we're trying to fit it with saying that we don't have to keep the law of circumcision then go and get me another witness because we already have set the record that Paul wasn't doing away with circumcision that's what we did within this class so with this one particular text that we read in right here we can't use this to say this is doing away with circumcision in this next verse read that for me bro is any man called being circumcised? So we talking about, hey, if you call being circumcised, that's like me and this brother, you know, hey, we physically Israel. So, hey, is any call being circumcised? What else it reads? Let him not become uncircumcised. Let him not become uncircumcised. You know, we're not talking about, you know, you, how you going to put the foreskin back on, you know, like, nah, we're not talking about that. You know, we're talking about, hey, I'm called circumcised. This brother is circumcised. 
meaning of the stock of Abraham. So that's what it's saying. It's saying, hey, if any, it says, is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Meaning, we ain't finna go back into the world. Because that's what uncircumcised in this context is referring to. You know, us going back to our old lifestyle, how we once used to be. Nah, because we've been called to be circumcised. Or we was called in circumcision. What else he reads, bro? Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. So talking about the Gentiles, man, don't try to become like the Israelites. That's what he's getting at. Hey, you ain't even got to try to be asked them or like them because what? Hey, God is not a respect of a person. You know, one that fear him and keep his commandments, hey, is who God respect. So in other words, hey, if you're not Israel physically, guess what I always tell people? I'm spiritually Israel. Because that's what count the most. So even in this verse right here, it says, hey, is any call in uncircumcision, let him not be circumcised. Meaning, hey, if you are physically a European or of other nations, hey, you ain't got to be like the Jew. Nah, because what else reads in the next verses, bro? Circumcision is nothing. So circumcision is nothing. What else? And uncircumcision is nothing. What is what is something? But the keeping of the commandments of God. You see that? That's the goal. You know, that's the prize right there. And that's the prize that you got to, you know, obtain all the way into the end. But guess what? Hey, Paul is clearly letting you know is that, hey, you being an Israelite or you being a non-Israelite, man, that ain't nothing. It's about you keeping the commandments of God. That's what it's truly about. So, you know, to come in to use this as, hey, we really don't have to keep the commandments of God. Nah, because that ain't even in the context as you read that. I left this out, but let's go, on, let's go to Romans chapter 2. You know, I was doing this at like 3 o'clock in the morning. And I left this out. I'm like, dang, I just looked down because I have to... After Romans chapter 3, we're supposed to be going to Romans chapter 2. And we're going to start at verse 11 because it coincides perfectly. It coincides perfectly with what we just read in Romans chapter 3. I'm sorry, what we just read in 1 Corinthians. What we just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, this Romans chapter 2 is fitting perfectly for the occasion. Romans 2, let's pick it up at verse 11. Go ahead and read it, bro. For there is no respect of persons with God. You see that? No respect of person with God. Why is that? Verse 12. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. Keep reading. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. You see that? Hey, if you sin without the law, guess what? You're going to perish without the law. Guess what? Hey, if you sin in the law, guess what's going to judge you? The law. So in other words, hey, there's no respect of a person when it comes with dealing with God. What is saying verse 13, bro? For not the hearers of the law are just before God. Keep reading. But the doers of the law shall be justified. You see who's going to be justified? The doers of the law. You can't just be talking about, oh, I hear that I'm supposed to be circumcised and feel as if, like, you're not compelled to do so. No. Nah. Because guess what? You are just adhering to the word. Nah, you got to be a doer. Okay, hey, Father Abraham, God told him in the law pertaining to the son being born on, the son, the male child being born on the eighth day, he got to be circumcised. Guess what? If I'm past the age of eight days old, I got to be circumcised physically. Then I have to do so. Again, I lay this out here is because I understand the times that we in. You know, I understand that this is a simple procedure that we can just go out and have done at an inexpensive cost. I, I get that. But guess what? Hey, it can be done. And it's supposed to be done. So, you know, hey, I lay it out there. Hey, IOG in Riverdale, Illinois, they are doing circumcision for children, babies, and adults, you know, at the price of $700. And guess what? Hey, I'm pretty sure they may work with you because they understand that salvation is at hand. 
And they understand that financially, people ain't in the position that they want to be in. So I'm pretty sure they'll help you out. But guess what? They are doing it in that location. So you don't have to go through Google search. You don't have to worry about if your insurance is going to cover it. I don't even know if they have it set up to where your insurance can be covered up under, but it can be done and it has to be done. Am I saying you're going to be cut off if you don't have it done? I don't know. But me, I'm going to make sure I have all my T's crossed and all my I's dotted because, you know, this God that we serve, you know, I call him an assassin, you know. So I ain't even trying to, you know, play in that category. But we can read, though, is that, hey, it must needs be born. I mean, it must needs be done. But we see is that what in 13, it says, but not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Skip down to verse 23 and read that for me, bro. Mm -hmm. Thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law dishonorest thou God. You see that? You boasting of the law, but guess what? You breaking the law. Mm. You know, guess who you dishonoring? God. Keep reading. 23. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. Go ahead. For circumcision very, verily profited. Keep going. If thou keep the law. You see that? Hey, circumcision physically. That's what we was dealing with in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. So it's letting you know it's that what? Hey, circumcision verily profit if thou keep the law. But keep going. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. You see that? Hey, your circumcision is made uncircumcision. If you are breaking of the law, what else to read, bro? Therefore, if this uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his circumcision be counted for circumcision? You see that? In other words, God is not a respect of a person. You got to realize, hey, if the uncircumcision is willing to keep the commandments of God, guess what they uncircumcision count as? Circumcised. Because what? They have pulled back the foreskin of that heart, and now they're willing to be obedient unto God. That's what they're willing to become now. So that's why I said in what? In the bottom of verse 26, it says, Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? What is saying 27, bro? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, Judge D. Go ahead. Who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. You see that? So the uncircumcision, he can correct the circumcision. Because what? Hey, they are keeping the law of the letter as well. So they have the right to check you if you fall out of line. Because they are toting the same ball and chain all the way through the finish line like you trying to obtain. So we see it's that way. Hey, it said in the bottom of verse 27, it says, who by the letter and circumcision do is transgress the law. Because what it said in verse 28, bro? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. You see that? It's not the outward look. Keep going. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. You see that? Hey, neither is that circumcision. We talking about physical because he did say, which is outward in the flesh. Keep reading. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. You see that? Hey, the circumcision is that of the heart. This is what we're dealing with. We're not doing away with you being physical circumcised. Circumcised. We dealing with the fact that, hey, you could be physically circumcised, but not keep the law. Hey, your circumcision is counted for uncircumcision. If you rolling like that, the same topic of conversation Paul was dealing with in first Corinthians chapter seven, the same topic of conversation. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go over here now to Deuteronomy chapter 10. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 10, the same conversation Paul was dealing with in Deuteronomy. I'm sorry. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and 17 through 19, same conversation he's dealing with in Romans chapter 2. The same. He ain't doing away with nothing. Nah, he not. So let's look at this Deuteronomy chapter 10. 
Let's look at the purpose of you circumcising the foreskin of your heart. Or oh, I'm sorry, let's look at the purpose of you circumcising yourself physically. Because it's pointing to this. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Let's read 12 through 16. Deuteronomy 10, 12 through 16. Go ahead and read it, bro. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Go ahead. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, uh -huh. and to love him, mm -hmm. and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. This is the requirement. This is what God requires of you. That's why Solomon said the same thing in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Hey, the duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. Right? So this is the requirement that God has of you. Keep reading. What is saying 13, bro? To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Go ahead. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God. Go ahead. The earth also with all that therein is. Verse 15. This is what we came here for. Go ahead. Only the Lord had a delight in thy father to love them. Keep going. And he chose their seed after them even you above all people as it is this day. So, hey, he chose the fathers. This is what he did. You know, we come in here for 16 also, but even in 15, it says, well, only the Lord has the light in thy fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them. God chose, you know, our forefathers' seed after us. This is what he did, right? Read 16 for me, bro. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. So the conclusion is, circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart to do what? And be no more stiff-necked. So be no more stiff-necked, meaning be no more disobedient, you know. Hearken unto the voice of the Lord. That's what physically circumcision is pointing to. It's pointing to more than just that. But in this class, what we're dealing with, we're looking at, how you are supposed to remove the foreskin around your heart, which is what we fit to go and read in this Jeremiah chapter four. Let's read that. Jeremiah chapter four. What is it? You know, we're going to read it in Proverbs though, but you know, we're going to let the Bible show what the hardness around your heart truly is. You know, because if you still got this around your heart, you know, the Lord may kill you in your sin. That's what he may do. So why try God? Why? It's crazy. But anyhow, Jeremiah chapter 4. Let's read verses 1 through 4. When you get it, go ahead and read it, bro. If thou wilt return, O Israel, mm -hmm. said the Lord, go ahead. return unto me. And if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove. Go ahead. And thou shalt swear the Lord liveth in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness. And the nation shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. In God they shall glory. What is it saying, verse 3, though? For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground. Go ahead. And sow not among thorns. So don't sow among thorns. Right? Why is he saying this? What is it saying, verse 4? Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Go ahead. And take away the foreskins of your heart. You see that? Hey, circumcise yourself to the Lord. I mean, be obedient unto God, brothers and sisters. That's what he getting at. That's what God is saying through the mouth of Jeremiah at this point. Hey, circumcise yourself unto the Lord. Take away the foreskin of your heart. What else it reads? Ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Keep reading. Lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doom. You see that? The Lord is going to burn you if you don't circumcise yourself unto him. If you don't remove the foreskin, let's go over to Proverbs chapter 28 and let's look at what this foreskin represents. If you don't remove this from your heart, guess what? The Lord is going to kill you. Why die in your sins, brothers and sisters? Why? Is it worth it? It's not worth it, brothers and sisters. Hey, so in other words, circumcise yourself to the Lord. Proverbs 28 and read 13 through 14 for me. When you get it, go ahead and take off, bro. He that covers his sins shall not prosper. You see that? Hey, Jesus is the one that covers your sins by his blood being shed. But if you trying to cover your own sins, hey, you ain't going to prosper. Because what is going to lead you to? Keep going. But whoso confess, confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. He shall have mercy. 
right? Because if you come for your own sins, you're going to die in them, right? But check out verse 14, because this is what we came in for. Go ahead. Happy is the man that feareth always. Go ahead. But he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. This is the foreskin of your heart, because you have hardened your heart. This is what's wrapped around your heart, hardness. That old loose skin that you were supposed to get rid of, males, physically. But guess what? It's wrapped around your heart spiritually because you don't want to be obedient to God. You know? You don't want to obey. You want to fall in the category of Saul. You know? God said, hey, rebellion is as witchcraft. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Why? Why? Do you want to die in your sins? Obey or obedience is better than sacrifice. Let's go over here to John real quick. John chapter 7. Let's look at Jesus. Because Jesus says something along the lines of these stiff-necked Pharisees. He says something to them even pertaining to the law of circumcision. And he hit them with this. is because their hearts was wrapped in hardness. It was wrapped in hardness. You know, they was just hung up on, you know, the law of Moses. Nothing wrong with that. It's perfect. But guess what can't resurrect you? The law of Moses. That can't resurrect you. The one that's going to resurrect you is the one that you denying, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. That's what they was doing. They was denying him, but look at what he hit them with. John 7, and let's read 16 through 24. John 7, 16 through 24, when you get it, Go ahead and read it, bro. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine. Keep going. But he is that sent me. You see that? Hey, this ain't my doctrine. That's what Jesus said. Guess what I'm saying? The same thing. This ain't my doctrine. What we dealt with throughout the course of this class, this ain't me. Nah, this is what thus say the Lord. So even Jesus saying the same exact thing. This is not my doctrine, but he is that sent me. 17. If any man would do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether speak of myself. 18. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. You see that? This is what you get when you're trying to speak of yourself. You're trying to seek your own glory. <laughs> you know, my glory is vain because it ain't going to get you anywhere. Truly. That's why we read in that Proverbs 28. Hey, because it told you is that, hey, if you try to cover your own sins, you're going to come up short. Mm. So that's why, hey, I am not speaking of myself. Even Jesus wasn't speaking of himself. He was glorifying the Father. So it says, what, in 18, he that speak of himself seek his own glory, but keep reading. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Keep going. Verse 19. Did not Moses give you the law? Go ahead. And yet none of you keepeth the law? You see that? Hey, y'all ain't even keeping the law, but guess who gave it to you? Moses. You see why the Lord is dealing with these stiff-necked Pharisees and Sadducees? Because these are your church folks today. You know, they all high and glorified and holier than thou. But guess what they're not doing? They're not even keeping the law. So we see is that what? In verse 19 it says, did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you keep the law? Go ahead. Why go ye about to kill me? So why are you trying to kill me? What is saying 20? The people answered and said, Thou hast a devil. They actually saying, man, you tripping, Jesus. Because what else is it? Who goes about to kill thee? So who, are they, who trying to kill you? You got to realize you're dealing with God in the flesh. You know, in other places, God even said he knew their thoughts. Mm. So he already knew before they knew that they was trying to kill him. Right? What is saying verse 21? Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work. And ye all marvel. 22. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision. Go ahead. Not because it is of Moses, but of the Father. So it's of the Father. That's why Moses was about to get killed. Because it was his duty to circumcise the man child on the eighth day. So that's why I'm saying it's of the Father. You know, okay. And if you ain't got a father in the house, then look at the example of what the Zippor did. Zippor went about handling the matter. But we still see it that way. Hey, Jesus said, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. Keep going. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. So you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. Keep reading. 
if a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that is the, I'm sorry. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken. Go ahead. Are you angry at me? Because I have made a man every whit hold on the Sabbath day. And this is the hardness of their heart. Read 24, bro. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. They wasn't judging righteously. Jesus making a man whole, you know. A man had an infirmity, he probably couldn't walk in this matter, or he probably was lame. But Jesus, hey, he made a man whole on the Sabbath. So they trying to ridicule him, but they are putting forth the same works on the Sabbath by circumcising a man. Calling them a hypocrite because they had hardness within their heart, brothers and sisters. That's what the matter is. And we see is that what? He says, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous. Let's go to 2 Peter real quick. 2 Peter chapter 3. Got one more place after this. 2 Peter chapter 3, because check out what Peter said pertaining to the letters of Paul. You know, is that if you not really learned or understood on the letters of Paul, it can get you caught up. You know, it truly can. It's why it's very careful for you to make sure you get you some understanding because, you know, especially if you're a man over your household, you don't want to lead your family down a, sip, a slippery slope. You really don't. So this is why it's very critical for you to get this understanding. Second Peter chapter 3, let's pick it up at 14 through 17. Go ahead and read it, bro. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. So when the Lord returns, you want to make sure you found without spot and blameless. In other words, you want to make sure you found without sin, right? What is saying 15 though? And to count that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. You see that? This long suffering of our Lord is salvation. That's what he bring it to the table. Keep going. Even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you. Go ahead. I, as also in his, all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Go ahead. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. So they are unlearned and unstable. But Peter said in the top of 16, right? He said, which are some things hard to be understood. In all his epistles, you know, his epistles go from Romans to 1st and 2nd Corinthians to Timothy, 2nd and 1st Timothy to 1st and 2nd Thessalonians to Colossians to Galatians to Philippians. Whatever I miss, those are all the epistles of Paul. So Peter is clearly letting you know is that, hey, which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned. And unstable rest. That means they twist or they wrestling with the scriptures and eventually they'll twist it to fit their belief mm. or the doctrine that they are promoting. So that's what it's saying. It says what? It says rest and what else? As they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You see that? Hey, they do this to their own destruction because what it said in verse 17 ye therefore beloved see ye know these things before beware lest you also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness you see that you fall from your own steadfastness because what you are led in error of the wicked you know be careful of this be mindful brothers and sisters you know because what we dealt with pertaining to Paul Paul didn't take you being physically circumcised off the table Nah, he just was getting like the Gentiles or he was getting like those that are of the law. Because those that was of the law, guess what? Why he became like them, he was preaching to them Jesus. You know? Because that's what needed to be added on top of the law. Again, the law is not going to resurrect you. It's going to allow you to be resurrected, but the law didn't get up on the cross and die for your sins. Nah, Jesus was the one that got on the cross and died for your past sins. So just understanding is that, hey, Paul was being crafty about 
bringing or converting those into this gospel. Right. Let's go to the last place. Let's go over to Ezekiel. You know, because I read this to a brother when he tried to, you know, hand to me that Paul was, you know, doing away with you being physical circumcised. Well, how is it when we're going to read Ezekiel? Just because we read in the Old Testament doesn't mean that it was speaking for the Old Testament of that time. Nah, what we're fit to read, it is speaking for the future. That's what we're fit to read. It's talking about the future. And if circumcision is something that was taken off the shelf, then why are we fit to read what we fit to read in this Ezekiel 44? Just letting you know is that the Bible don't contradict itself. Paul isn't contradicting himself. It says you may be unlearned. And again, I say that humbly because I was unlearned, right? But what takes you to receive a statement like that is some type of humility and realize where you probably been going wrong at. Let's look at this Ezekiel 44. Ezekiel 44, and we're going to read 6 through 9. Ezekiel 44, 6 through 9. When you get it, go ahead and read it, bro. And thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, O ye house of Israel, go ahead. let it suffice you of all your abominations. Keep reading. And that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers. Brought into my sanctuary strangers. Keep going. Uncircumcised in heart. Hold on. They are spiritually uncircumcised. Because that's what it's talking about when it says in heart. What else it reads? And uncircumcised in flesh. Hold on. Did God cover this through the mouth of Ezekiel? Mm -hmm. Talking about physically and spiritually? Because mm -hmm. that's what it means when it says uncircumcised in flesh. We talking spirit. I mean physical here. Keep going though. What else it reads, bro? To be in my sanctuary. Go ahead. To pollute it, even my house. When he offered my bread, the fat, and the blood. And they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. So you don't broken the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's covenant. You know, keeping up the commandments. You don't broke them, right? Peep this though. What does it say in verse 9? I'm sorry, verse 8. And ye have not kept the charge of mine holy thing. Keep going. But ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. So you don't set keepers in my sanctuary for your profit or your gain. But Read verse 9 because you can't get away from this verse right here. Because even in this chapter 44, this is future. The Lord ain't got his sanctuary set up here on this earth. Now, nah, we're not talking about this house that we're in. We're not talking about any of the churches that are established dealing with the word of God. Nah, that's not his sanctuary that he's going to come and set up he himself by using Zerubbabel to build his temple. Nah, that's in the future. And that's what we read right here in chapter 44 of Ezekiel. So read this verse 9 for me, bro. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God. Go ahead. No stranger, uncircumcised in heart. So that's spiritual. What else? Not uncircumcised in flesh. That's physical. Keep going. Shall enter into my sanctuary. Go ahead. Of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. So they not going to be able to enter. Let you know is that, hey, the stranger got to get on the path with Father Abraham, you know, because the covenant was made with Abraham and inside of that covenant, there's many things inside of the covenant, but the class that we was dealing with is circumcision. You have to be physically and spiritually circumcised, brothers and sisters. Obey is better than sacrifice. Circumcise the foreskin of thy heart. I pray somebody got some understanding. I thank you for your time in Jesus' name. Peace. <laughs> Praise God. So, all right, so we're going to have these announcements. Our prayer is that the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. Mm -hmm. DVDs and CDs of the lesson are available. Please place your order in the offering box along with your donation and pick up your DVD CD at, up at the podium next Sabbath. Please tune in to Thy Kingdom Come television program, which airs in various locations. Also join us for our question and answer Bible study in about an hour from now and every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via live stream and our teleconference at 860-970-0010 access code 
343-531-334 pound. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the baptismal list at the podium or speak with Brother Tony or Brother Anthony. On the first day, I'm sorry, on the first Sunday of every month, we broadcast the Bible in plain view. This broadcast gives brothers an opportunity to read and or teach a short 30-minute class. If you are interested in helping, please let us know. The following is the dress code for our services. All clothing should be modest in appearance, nothing tight-fitting, over back, over, overly baggy, sagging, or revealing should be worn. Men are to remove hats and all head covering, and women should wear a head covering, such as a hat or scarf, according to 1 Corinthians 11, verses 1 through 7. If your child becomes noisy during the lesson, distracting other members, please remove him or her to the other room next door. Any tithes and our free will offerings should be put in an offering envelope and placed in the offering box near the podium. Pray for our strength as we pray for you until next Sabbath. Peace. Peace. All right, so we'll get ready to close it out and we'll come back for Q&A. Um, I always say, man, you know, we should always be praying for each other. You know, prayer is powerful, and it truly works, man. But in order for it to work for you, you got to have that faith. You know what I mean? So as I would always say, man, definitely pray for me and my family. And we'll always continue to pray for you guys because that's something that we should be doing anyhow, you know, during these troublesome times that we're dealing with. So, you know, again, man, if anybody don't have anything they would like to say, you know, anybody need to be prayed or prayed over, you know. If not, we're going to face Jerusalem, close out, and we'll return back for Bible Q&A. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth, thy will be done in earth. As, it in as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, and us our debts as, we our as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. From evil. For, thine For thine is the kingdom and the power and the, power and the, glory, and the glory forever. forever. Praise, Praise the Lord. For he is good, he is good. And, his forever. and his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. The Lord God of Israel. For, he is good, For he is good and his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. The, Holy the Holy One of Israel, the King of Kings, King of kings and, Lord of Lords, and Lord of Lords, the One True God, the one true God and there is, no other. there is no other. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen.